Hi, welcome to this episode of the Distributed Data Show, where we're talking all about killer video and all about my favorite language, Python. Python. From Datastack, this is the Distributed Data Show. So we've been working on a dev project, you and I. Yes. Uh, for the last couple, like maybe two months yeah. or so. And what's the focus of that project that we've been working on? Tell the audience here. Well, so we are doing an implementation of the killer video reference application in Python. Yes. I think, well, one of the reasons that we started working in Python is because I kind of made us, because it's one of my favorite languages to code in. But not everything's about me, right? right. Well, and OK, it was also about me, because I've never done app dev in Python before. So I said, hey, I'm game. Let's do this. Right. But uh, that actually sort of begs the question a little bit. Like, do people do production app development in Python? Right. Well, honestly, I mean, I think we've seen like multiple articles because there's always those year in articles, yeah. right? And all of them have been saying, you know, Python, you know, number top language of 2008 or 2018. Right. Um, so, I mean, we know it's one of the number one languages out there. If it's right. not number one, it's definitely in the top five, right? Um, but I think going back to your question, do people actually do, you know, production level development in Python? And I think the answer is absolutely they do, right? Yeah. And I think kind of, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and we're going to talk about a few of them as we go through the episode. Right. But I think one of the, the major ones that I see is, you know, when you're prototyping something, Python's so easy to get something up and running really quickly. But we're all crunched for time. So how often do you take that prototype that you made? make some tweaks, and then off into production it goes. So I think that's why you're definitely going to see a lot of apps. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that's so that might have been the case in the past. Like um, maybe I do a little bit of prototyping in Python. Maybe I throw it away. Maybe I keep it. But there's this whole world of data science applications that's right. happening right right now. And I've seen you do amazing things in Jupyter Notebooks. And I'm like, you can do that? <laughs> right. Right? Exactly. So it's like a whole new world. Right, right. Where, you know, you you are rapid prototyping. It's kind of a WYSIWYG almost. Like you're you're doing things, and then it's like, yep, that's the product. Right. There right. you go. And then you can also do data analytics on top of that. Right. right? So you kind of have the full <laughs> full gambit to be able to to do whatever it is you want to do. Right. Okay. So let's talk about our jam here because yeah. it is Cassandra DataStacks Enterprise, right? So we are doing application development with Python uh, in Cassandra and DSC. Right. So. Um, what are some of the unique aspects of that? And actually, actually, I was thinking about this. Um, there is a one of the first Cassandra applications that everyone uses um, is actually written in Python. Do you oh. know what I'm talking about? I think I might, but you okay, tell go, me. Go for it. I think it might be SQL SH. Yes, that's right. That is actually written in Python, and it actually uses the Python driver okay. under the hood. Um, to talk to Cassandra. So there, I would argue, hey, there's an example, right, of, of that. So, you know, kind of inspired by that and, and based on that, we're going to do this killer video. Uh, we're, we're Specifically, we're implementing the service layer of right. killer video. So, like, we're not re-implementing the front end. Right. Uh, this is the back end, the microservices on the back end that we're re-implementing in Which Python. I, actually, you could do the front end in Python as well if you really wanted to, but... We're okay. just focusing on the services, right? Right, now. but it it exists and it works, and we yeah we wanted to demonstrate exactly. the the key part was like let's demonstrate how to interact with Cassandra, uh, using using Python. Right. So that's that's what we did. Um, so I want to ask you, we've been we've been collaborating on this for a little while now. Like, what um, what are some of the pros and cons of of doing that, or like, what was the like what was the easy part? Right. So I'm definitely going to say the easy part and, and really kind of why I wanted us to do this is because there's a lot of languages that we have done that we've implemented killer video with the services layer. Uh, right. We have Java, Node.js, uh, C Sharp. Yeah. And, and all of those are great if you already know those languages. But let's say you're coming in um, and, and maybe you don't even know Python. Now, a lot of people do, but let's say you don't. Let's say you don't know any of the ones that we have there. Yes, okay. Python is the most easy to just, if you know how to program, you know how to read Python. That's right. Okay, so low barrier to entry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I found that to be true. I found like I could like, kind of say things and express things a little bit more concisely yeah. in Python as compared to some of the other language implementations right. that, that we've done. So that was definitely the case. Um, 
I also really liked the fact, and, I, and actually I had to learn to do this over time. Um, I, I realized this about myself that I would like, I got this classic Java lather, rinse, repeat thing where, you know, write a little bit of code, um, run, you know, run a little bit of a test to see if that last part worked. And there's like this whole compile right. process that's built into it. Right. And I kept doing that with the, with Python in a sense. And then I was like, why am I not just prototyping and learning the syntax by typing it the, at the command prompt? Right. Right. Like, of course. It just makes life so much easier. <laughs> you can just try something out and boom, right away you know. It was like a 3x productivity boost right. <laughs> that I probably should have known ahead of time. But again, like learning curve or write new language. So exactly. Um, what was what was the some of the stuff that was the easy part for you? So I think also besides what you've mentioned, yes, right? I know, but yes. I want more. There's so many. Well, <laughs> that's why I love Python because it is so easy. Right. It's so easy to learn and it's so easy to get things implemented up and running. Um, I think one of the other things is all the libraries that there are for Python. That okay. just makes it so much easier to implement things. Um, I think you had a really good example of uh, an email checker. Yeah, um, okay, right. Yeah. That, I, the, the Java implementation has this whole thing where it's kind of like building a regular expression to sort of validate whether, um, and you have to think through like, what's a valid email address? And we build this regular expression so that I parse out where the at sign is and all this. Right. There's a library that checks for a valid email address. And it actually has multiple levels of functionality. I just use the first where it checks like valid format. There's another... Uh, extension to the library where it actually goes and like checks if that's a real domain. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, like, I mean, it's all there. I mean, you just imported that library and right. you were good to go. Yeah. So, um, so there must have been some other, like, was there any easy thing that you can talk to us about, about using the driver? Like, yes. Okay. So yeah, this was, um, it's funny because of all my learning curves in developing the application, um, the Cassandra part and incorporating with the driver was the easiest. Now you might argue that's because I already know Cassandra and there might be some truth to sure. that. But, um, you know, learning the language syntax of Python, that's one part of the learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's so funny, like how many different ways could there be to implement an if statement? But every language <laughs> every has to put different. its own spin on yeah. it, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, basically, and I admit I was cheating a little bit too, because um, you know all the work that uh, that David and Luke and others right. had done on building up the Java application was already there. Right. So I was more or less copying over the queries. I didn't have to figure out what the CQL queries were going to be. Right. I was just like, okay, here's a CQL query. I'm going to take it and um, this. I'm, I'm mostly using prepared statements mm -hmm. and the object mapper, which actually maybe we should talk about. Um, oh, that's the least easy part of, the mapper. of using that. Yeah. Um, and I actually talked with a driver team about this and they, you know, they were like, definitely there are some cases where it's good to use the mapper. And then there's some cases where it doesn't fill oh. your functionality. What's an example of when you shouldn't use it? Um, well, there was just some cases where uh, I had to do a little bit more of a complex query. Okay. Um, specifically paging. Okay. Uh -huh. So we have a couple of services where we have to, um, we, we actually have uh, methods on microservices that allow you to get one page of results right. for a web page at a time. That's, some, that's not something that you can easily handle directly through the mapper is managing that page state. That's not exposed. So at that point, you have to kind of dive down and just do raw or more regular CQL queries okay. and manage the paging state yourself. Yourself. Okay. Yeah. So that's an example. So my mode of operation was I want this to be as easy as possible. I'm gonna use the mapper if I can. And then if I can't, I'll back off to using other methods. Okay. So that was kind of how I, how I did it. Um, one of the other things that was really easy uh, was the, doing the DSE search queries. Oh, okay. Like, so that's all integrated with the Python Python driver. Yeah, you can exactly. Use everything. Okay. You know, I had this image in my mind that I'm like, okay, you know, I, I'm really comfortable. I'm strongest at Cassandra. I'm, this is gonna be easy. Right. Okay, I got that part down. Now I'm gonna have to get my big boy pants on to go do turn on the search stuff, you know, get all ready for that. And it right. was like, it was a non-event. Huh. Like it was so easy, it just worked. So once I, I mean, I already had the search indexes built, right? Because we have sure. all the, we have all that tooling and scripting built out. Um, so again, the search was super easy. Um, so what about uh, the not as easy yes. side? Did you have some pain points in your work? Yes. Now this is not so much specifically to killer video, yeah. but anytime you are doing development in Python, you're going to have dependency issues. So yes, yes. So you have all those beautiful libraries that are gonna do so much work for you, yeah. but you have to import them. Okay. You have to have them there in your environment. So I, like most folks, I'm assuming, 
of course I think, okay, I'm just going to just do everything just quick, quick, quick. I'm not even yep. going to think about setting up my environment. I'm just going to pip install sudo all over the place. It's and magical. Then, and then just hope that it all works. Well, lo and behold, everything breaks down. Everybody's had those dependency issues. You go down this rabbit hole and then you're stuck. Right. Stuff is broken. So for me, lesson learned as I should, I've learned many times. I don't know why I had to learn it again, but you always want to do virtual environments to set up your dependencies uh, like Anaconda or something like that. Once I started doing that, I was good to go. Okay, I'm gonna listen to the pro here. I just realized <laughs> why I didn't have this problem. It's my first hardcore Python dev project. I don't have a bunch of other stuff installed, <laughs> yeah. but I did, um, I, for whatever reason, you know, kind of the permissions I have on my laptop, I, I wasn't able to do uh, pip, just pip install raw mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. so I didn't develop a bad habit. I was always doing the pip install dash user. And Much then, better. So that's at least a little better, right? Right. I should go the right. full route and do Anaconda in the future, but okay. Good enough for yeah. right now, right? Exactly. Okay, here's my bugaboo is uh, in Python. So Python does not uh, enforce a lot of uh, strong typing at right. compile time. Right. Now I was reading up on this and I kind of got lost in the debate about <laughs> whether Python was officially a strong typing language or not. And it kind of made my head swim. So send me the hate mail later if I got it wrong. But the point is there's a lot of times where uh, you, you you can get into situations where you don't know the type of something or that's not checked until runtime. Right, right. I uh, had that happen to me as well. Mess yeah. with my head so much. Yeah. Um, and that's where like kind of working through things at the command line really did help me. Um, maybe if I was a stronger Python developer, it would be like super natural to me. Um, maybe this is why I suck at JavaScript too, but Java's my jam, Java for the win. <laughs> Strong typing all the way. So, okay, so we've talked about, <laughs> we've talked about what's been easy, Yeah. what has not been easy, Let's talk about what's been fun. So okay. you, I know you have something that you really want to share about what's been fun. Yes. Okay. Well, so uh, so far, pi all of the um, killer video implementations have basically implemented. It's a microservices architecture. All the all the microservices could theoretically be running in separate processes, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, running on different servers. Sure. We could scale them independently. We haven't implemented it that way because we were trying to make a simple app. Um, we have started down this road of sort of breaking up the monolith uh, mm -hmm. and and doing that. So part of the step of that is actually we do have some events that uh, asynchronously services are communicating with each other. Like, hey, a video was added. The suggestion service might want to know about that so right. that it can calculate recommendations of what videos someone might want to watch. So we've been using events for that. Uh, I was like, I'm done doing this in memory stuff. I want to use Kafka. Okay. Like. Hey, I'm learning Python. Yes. Okay. Hey, I haven't used Python. Uh, I haven't used Kafka yet. I want to use Kafka. Right. So that was the fun part for me was getting all that going. So I guess I'll segue into hopefully that'll be fun for me because actually that's uh, still pending for me to be working on since we're not all the way done quite yet that's with right. our implementation. Uh, maybe when this episode comes out, maybe we will all be done and I'll be talking about how awesome it was to integrate my service that I've been working on with Kafka. I want to congratulate the future version of Amanda <laughs> as she's watching this episode later on. Good it. work. Yeah. Nice work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm really hoping that I also will echo that how fun and easy it uh, was. One of the other things that we haven't tackled yet that I'm really looking forward to is uh, maybe using Graph for the recommendation engine. Right. Uh, but we were just talking a little bit ago, and maybe I don't have to do it the same way that we implemented it in Java. So we, we uh, have an implementation in Java that's heavily dependent on DSC Graph, which is right. a great way to kind of exhibit some of the capabilities of that tool. Right. But you're telling me that we have other options. Right. If we're going to be doing a recommendation recommendation of videos, um, we don't necessarily have to use Graph. Uh, like you said, Graph is a great way to do that. And we actually have that all implemented in the Java versions. Right. Um, but we can use the, I mean, Python is all about data science. Yeah. So doing recommendations in Python is going to be probably really effortless. So now, like mixing in little pandas or what is it? Exactly. Like, what, what are we going to be using? Well, that's now that's a good question. There's all kinds of things that we can use, and I can't think of one right off the top of my head, but well, that's okay. This, okay, so this would be, this, yeah, <laughs> this I just, research. I turned the distributed data show into like a feature road mapping session. <laughs> right. I, exactly. I have this bad habit of doing such things. So. <laughs> but I think what we want to point and ask to the audience is should we implement this in graph, or should we go down this Python data science route for a recommendation engine? Yes. So we cool. really want your comments. Let us know because we haven't done it yet. So right. if we get some feedback, then that's what we'll do. Perfect.
So that wraps up this episode, uh, talking all about Python and our implementation with Killer Video. And seriously, on social media, let us know whether we should, how we should implement that recommendation engine. That would be really cool. We get your hope. Yeah, exactly. Let us know what you think we should do, and we'll go do it. Um, and so stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to stay on this languages track, and we're going to focus on the Go language. So stay tuned and see you next time.